we can look at a Lagrangian control mass in the same way to see what the consequences of conservation of mass are. So we know the equation should turn out to be di u di x plus di v di y is equal to zero. We got that from the book and we made it work in an Eulerian framework. So let's try it in a Lagrangian framework. What's happening here is if that velocity is bigger than that velocity, the u velocity component on this side is bigger than the u velocity component on that, that side, then this is going to move faster than that does and the whole control mass is going to squish in the x direction because u2 is greater than u1. If it's going to squish this way then it's got to stretch in the y direction. So v2 on the top has to be greater than v1. That's the logic of it. Now if this thing is square then v2 minus v1 has to, V2 has to be bigger than V1 by exactly the same amount that U2 is smaller than U1. We get the same equation, U2 minus U1 plus V2 minus V1 is equal to zero. Delta U over delta X, delta V over delta X, zero over delta X, just like last time. And we wind up with di U di X plus di V di Y equal to zero. Or in three dimensions we'd also add a di w di z term. So we get the same answer with a Lagrangian control mass as we did with an Eulerian control volume.